What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming, and I want to go back and give a little bit of a story from my own personal history, because it's kind of a weird one, and it's kind of a, I don't know, I'm sure you've had it in some way, shape, or form, but have you ever had that one thing, that one time, when something just blew your fucking mind? Gaming-wise, of course, be it after years and years and years and years, and shit just finally something you saw or heard or found out that you never thought was possible actually happened and boom that was it so chances are for most people out there something like the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter or the Final Fantasy 7 remake being officially confirmed is probably one of those situations for you my one was a little bit different and it took place a good few years ago so we're going to turn back time it's currently 2017, but we're going to turn back time over a dozen years till in around somewhere between the year 2000 and maybe 2004, 2005. It's probably towards the middle or end of that period. So for argument's sake, we'll say it's somewhere between 2000 and 2005. Probably 2003 or four, but you get the idea anyway. So what is it that just completely blew my mind and like was whatever we'll call it like irreparably damaged something just in my mind that could not happen but actually happened so this was at the time this was the sixth generation of consoles the dreamcast was being the dreamcast a very underrated console love my dc and me Two of me and three of my friends had Dreamcasts, and that was basically all we knew that had Dreamcasts around here, at least. Anyway, my town had very little in the way of, say, game stores or anything like that, or places to buy games. And because of that, the only two stores in my town that sold Dreamcast games, one of them was a phone store. Now, it was a phone store that sold one or two consoles at the time one or two accessories for it, and one or two games for it. It's actually where I got my Dreamcast back in the day. And they only had Sonic Adventure and I, I think it was like Blue Stinger or something like that. And, you know, one or two accessories. But, uh, yeah, that's where I got my Dreamcast back in the day. And the other place didn't even properly sell Dreamcast games. They had, they had 50, I'd say somewhere between 12 and 15 Dreamcast games. But I know what you're thinking. It's like, wait a minute, Q, that sounds... That sounds like they do sell Dreamcast games. That's what you're probably thinking. Every single Dreamcast game was exactly the same. So, like, every 12, 13, 15 copies, whatever it was, of the Dreamcast game they had in stock was MSR Racing. Yeah, or, well, it's not MSR Racing because it's Metropolitan Street Racer, so it's just MSR. You get the idea. They didn't really, you can't really count them as selling Dreamcast games. So... Because it was so very hard back then, to, the internet wasn't what it was, it was just budding out. Around here, we barely got broadband internet. We had DSL, if we were lucky. It was pretty expensive, and it was like 512 KB per second, so it was, it was pretty basic stuff. And because of our age at the time, like me and my friends, we were we were about 20, give or take, uh, like, let's see, uh, se let's call it, right, 17 years ago, I was, no, it couldn't have been 17 years ago, there's no way it was that, that early, wait, hang on, no, no, okay, this, this was, it, it, this is probably more about 10 years ago, no, it wouldn't even be that, god, I, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent anyway, but this would have happened in the early 2000s anyway, okay, so the Xbox 360 wouldn't have been out, so it would have been early 2000s. Now, it was because of our age at the time, it was very hard for any of us to, well, we basically didn't have jobs. And it was very hard for any of us to get anywhere because of, you know, lack of money. So we couldn't go up to Dublin and easily get a game. So, you know, new Dreamcast games were few and far between for all of us, except for one friend who had a job and he was he's a couple of years older than us, but he had a job and he that wasn't much of an issue for him. The only thing that was the issue when it came to it was the sheer amount of time and effort involved to like, you know, set out a day to just go to Dublin, uh, make a trip out of it and possibly pick up a game. So 
it even for him it was still a bit of an ordeal so because of all that and you know getting a new new dreamcast game like every four or five six months if you're lucky we had to turn to unscrupulous methods to get our dreamcast games especially once we found out that you could just download them and just burn them onto a regular cd and they would properly play in your dreamcast with no mod chips or no disc swapping or no anything needed now you know now we tried it out we tried some one or two things out and it was it was all good it seemed to work and you know okay let's we'll down a little stick like, okay well what am i in the mood to play or what game have i been dying to play that kind of shit and you know it goes from there eventually we get more and more into into finding these dreamcast games and building up a collection of of course of downloaded games and but that was then and this is now and i don't condone that shit but we've all done it and obviously i'm a physical guy now so now Here's the thing. We were looking through all of these. We were looking through... I remember being a member. Like, there, there was, you know, access membership. Not paid membership, but... Uh, torrent sites. And I remember being part... Per, myself, personally, being a member of a... Of a pretty notorious one at the time. Black Cats Games. Or Black Hat Gaming. I don't remember what it was a long time ago. Don't remember the exact name, but it was Black Cat Games or Black Hat Gaming. And um, it was very hard to get into, but once you were in, as long as you didn't fuck up, everything was there. Now, okay, this is when I I shared, I had a, an account just for, it was tied to an email account that was just for this thing, this website. It wasn't linked to my main stuff, my real stuff, anything like that. So me and him shared this account because we were both downloading these games and all that. So I remember one day, I can't remember what I was playing, but I was playing something. And one day he just rings me and he just says, hang on, can we, I'm, I'm going to blow your mind here. I just found out there is a Street Fighter 3. And I was like, you're fucking joking. You mean like Street Fighter 2 Turbo or Super Street Fighter or some shit? He goes, no, no, there's an actual Street Fighter 3. And I was like, okay, hang on. Talk to me about this. What is going on? Because at this point... Street Fighter 2 had a million fucking iterations for over 10 years. There were so many iterations and reiterations of that game that it always, at that point, it had always seemed like there would never be a new fully numbered Street Fighter. I know that's completely changed nowadays. I mean, we've got Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5. You get the idea. But at that point in time, because for over 10 years, they'd just been rehashing and re-releasing and re-upgrading and whatever the fuck, Street Fighter 2. You've got Street Fighter 2. You've got Street Fighter 2 Tournament, Tournament Edition. You've got Super Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. You've got fucking Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter EX Alpha 2, Street Fighter fucking hyperdimensional fighting, anal fisting, whatever. It was all Street Fighter 2. All Street Fighter 2. At this point, I kind of cooled off on the newer Street Fighter games at the time. Uh, I phased out on Street Fighter at Super Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. So when they added in Fei Long and DJ and all, that was my last proper Street Fighter game. I very rarely played anything after that. I'd play maybe like once every six months. I didn't own any more after that. It was just that kind of shit. But then we found out there was a Street Fighter 3. And yes, it had been released in the arcades in i believe it was 1997 so it would have been over three years before all of this happened and not to mention the dreamcast launched in 1999 and here's the thing because of the our inability to have easy access to dreamcast news or new dreamcast games even though street fighter 3 the first one because there are three iterations of it that even though the first one did release over here in the year 2000 and it was just so hard to find and so hard to get. There's so few magazines to cover Dreamcast stuff. The internet and news and all that stuff wasn't what it was. We had never heard of this. And it completely blew our fucking minds. And we were thinking, like, there's no way it could be as good as, like, you know, Tournament Edition or Hyper Fighting or any of that crap. Just Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I mean, Street Fighter 2 Turbo is the... That's, that's the definitive Street Fighter for me. You put Super Nintendo, Street Fighter 2 Turbo... That's it. That's Street Fighter to me. Now, 
we were thinking it's like you know we'll we'll play it. It's probably shit. You know, there's a reason why we've never heard of it. That we we were doing everything in our minds to defend why we didn't know this. So he was downloading it at the time because he had already found it and he wanted to get it going and all. So he's like, right, it's almost done. Come up to me, bring a Dreamcast pad. Let's do this. So I'm like, okay, you know, this this guy lives. I can see his house from mine. Like he lives like thirty second walk away from me. So I wrap up my Dreamcast pad. Start walking up there. I get there. He's uh, he's just extracting the ISO and he's burning the disc. And so it's like, okay, you know, we'll we'll, we'll pass some time. So we're we're so curious to this at the time. It's like Street Fighter Three. You know, what's the deal here? What's happened? This is like what wh- what is this? Why do we not know about this? It's probably crap. It's probably a, a you know spin off or a crappy knockoff or something like that. Even though it's like going to be an official Capcom game, they're just gonna like try and fail hard compared to Street Fighter Two. So we get it. The disc tray opens. That, that that's right. This was back when there was um, you know, uh, disc tray style stuff on PCs. I know a lot of them still are, but uh, when this was basically the only option back then. So uh, you know, the, the disc pops out. We take the CD out, pop it in the Dreamcast, boot it up. Of course, lo and behold, it works. Now I I also should mention at the time is uh, we did find out. I believe it was like the same night or in the meantime or something that there was a there was two other Street Fighter three games. There was the I was a double impact and like third impact or something like that. Third strike and double impact, whatever it was. So it would have been after the release of at least the, the three of them. So we we boot up uh, we boot up Street Fighter three. It boots up fine. We start playing and we look at the character select screen. Big variance. When you remember all the different versions of Street Fighter two. You had your basic roster of characters from, say, Street Fighter 2. Then you added in, like, the, the four boss characters. Then you added in the four new characters. You could you can toss Akuma in there somewhere as well. And we're looking at this, and we're like, well, hang on. You know, half the characters are missing. And who are the fuck are all these other characters? What the fuck is going on? So, I was like, okay, you know, fuck it. We'll just dive right in anyway. So, we start playing. First thing we notice is like, holy shit, these graphics are deadly. Because this, don't forget, this is a new generation of consoles. Technically, it's two new generation of consoles since a, a proper new Street Fighter game. Because, you know, it came out, we, Street Fighter Wii New came out on Super Nintendo. Sure, there have been PS1 versions and ports, and there's a, probably a couple of extra exclusive ones that were only on the, that generation, like the, the PlayStation 1 generation. But we kind of just phased off all them and ignored them. He played them a little bit more than I did, but you get the idea. So this is basically two new generations to get a new Street Fighter game. And we see the graphics on this. The art style, the character sprites. Holy shit. This is the business. This is this is the business. So we're up all night playing it. It's crazy. I, I, at one point, you know, we stopped and we swapped over to the second one and we played a bit more of that and then we swapped over to the third one and we played a bit of that I don't remember which one we settled on as being the definitive one in the end might have been the third one but whatever it's still just Street Fighter 3 and basically Street Fighter 3 came, became our new game for a, for a while like it was you know you'd, you'd play you'd sit down you might play a little bit of Shenmue you might play a little bit of you know Resident Evil or something like that or some Sonic Adventure but then you went back and played four times as much of what you just did in Street Fighter. Because that was what you were playing the majority of the day. Now, that lasted for maybe uh, two months or three months or so. But it was just crazy. The fact that after so many years and iterations of Street Fighter 2, that Street Fighter 3 finally existed. This entire time, almost this entire time, under our noses. And fucking blew our minds. Not just because it was so good and it was a great game, great game series, I should say, great game trilogy, whatever, but the fact that something we never thought could actually happen because of, like I said, so many iterations and so many years, so many rehashes, re-releases on different consoles, different generations, whatever, that they actually released it and it was the, it was just a bomb. So yeah, that's... um. That's something I, as you can tell, I still remember to this day, and it's still one of, one of the moments that I actually 
consider like a, a huge important milestone in my my life of gaming if you will because it, it was just mind boggling at the time and luckily it, it panned out I'm, I, I've obviously cooled down I think I've played Street Fighter 4 literally once I played one match of Street Fighter 4 the day it was released uh, I was downtown with my friend on the same friend actually I was downtown with him when the day came out he wanted to pick it up we, I was living somewhere else at the time, uh, much closer to like the. T- I was basically in an apartment in the town, and you know we just it, it was closer than either of our houses are now. So we just stopped in there. We played one match. Well, I played one match with him, and then I said, you know, fuck this. I'm I'm not playing this. This isn't for me. You play a couple more there. I'll watch and we'll we'll see what the deal is. So I never played Street Fighter Four properly. I've never even touched Street Fighter V. Uh, not even uh, is there even a demo? And not even a demo if there is. No, I didn't touch the beta. I didn't touch the full game. Uh, I've just completely gone off fighting games for like ninety nine percent of the time. For all intents and purposes, uh, fighting game, new fighting games at least are pretty much dead to me. So it's it's crazy to to see and know all of that, and it's I just felt like sharing it. Um, I know I've mentioned previously on one or two of the videos that I've put up recently, especially because videos have kind of, the the main types of videos on my channel have kind of slowed down. Um, I'm using this to kind of build myself back up in a, well, what's the best way of describing it? Uh, I'm using it to climb out of the really like down and negative situation my real life is in at the moment and just reflecting on some nostalgia for you know, the good times and younger times and better times when I didn't have to worry about shit and life was all good. It just, it helps. That's all I can say. Um, And that's basically it. If you've stuck around for this entire story, thank you for listening. Uh, Thank you for partaking in the sharing I do of, you know, my own personal anecdotal experience with, with this kind of stuff. So you can just imagine like two teenagers giddy as fuck over the discovery of Street Fighter 3. So yeah, that's that's it. Let me know in the comment section below if you've had any other, if you've had any mind blowing situations like that, because that's easily still like one of my top, probably, probably top number one, but like possibly easily one of the top two most important kind of like mind blowing, mind altering, mind fucks of gaming to me. And I'm sure you guys have them too, be it in some small way, shape, or form that, you know, it might be something small that just blew your mind, it might be something huge that blew your mind, whatever it is. If you have any thoughts on my story, if you want to share your own story, anything like that, throw it in the comments section below. We all have these kind of memories, we all have these kind of experiences, and I'd love to hear about them from other people, other like-minded people. Let me know all that anyway in the comment section below. Thank you for listening to this exceptionally long old man story. God, I feel old now because I said old man. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter. Details in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel.